Long time no see. It is not going to be levels plus monthly moving forward, I promise. <laughs> Welcome to episode 52 of Levels Plus Weekly. April was rough. Very rough month. We're in May now, so I'm going to try to get back into the swing of doing this a little bit more regularly. So for today's episode, we've got pickups. I actually recorded pickups like two weeks ago. <laughs> And I've got a couple more that I'm going to do real quick. And then I think I will keep things on the DL and we'll talk about some Switch stuff. So let's do the pickups real quick. I just picked these up today. So I have the Min Min Amiibo just came out. Um, apparently there are not many of these around. It took an extra week for me to get mine. <laughs> um, and I didn't see any of Best Buy when I looked today. Um, I also got a record of Lotus War, Deedlet, and Wonder Labyrinth. Um, this was also a week late. Didn't have any other copies of Best Buy, so I think that's going to be a rare physical copy of that game. Um, so let's quickly jump into the other pickups. All right, so first things first, I got my latest book, Levels Plus, The Best Of, 2001 to 2021. This book is so special to me. Oh my god. It's such a cool book. It is such a cool book on the inside. I really need to just, like, stop what I'm doing and do book videos on my books because all of them have become so precious to me. Um, and this one, I think, is the best one I've made um, in terms of the way it's designed and the way that it's come out. I just I absolutely adore it. So if you're interested in my books, all of them can be found in the description. So first up is this Masako Collector's Plush that's still in the bag. Um, I was eyeing these when they were at limited run and uh, decided, you know what? Fangamer's making these, they'll be on Fangamer eventually. And they were. And so, it's really cute. I love River City Girls. So, you can just hang out right there. Because you have a partner. <laughs> you have a partner in crime, which is the Kyoko one. Um, I'm so ecstatic to actually have, like, representations of these characters, and they're huge. Absolutely huge. Look at how cool this is. <laughs> um, just super rad. So having both of them just makes me happy. Um, I'll have to find a home for them both and clean them up a little bit, because, you know, they got transported, so... But I'm still not done, because I also got a River City Girls t-shirt, finally. Um, this shirt has been in and out of stock multiple times. <laughs> and it happened to fall when all this other stuff came out, so it comes with this sticker. Which is probably a bit hard to see, but it's of the art. Um, and Nina Matsumoto responsible for this design it's super rad I love it um, if I'm not mistaken I think she also did the design yeah she did for the, for the plushies as well and uh, finally happy to have that but what pushed me over <laughs> more than anything else was they have more grease merch because they can't I am I am a mark I am a mark for Grease merchandise, and they got me. They got me with a long sleeve shirt that is just beautiful towards the later end of the game. Nina Matsumoto did this as well. Absolutely beautiful artwork. Um, I don't think, I'm trying to remember if there's anything on the sleeves. It seems not. Um, and this is a thicker material. This is just a gorgeous shirt, so I'm so stoked to have it. I also got a big box. 
It's Lynn! <laughs> Lynn's in the big box. Lynn from Fire Emblem. I have been waiting for almost a year for this thing. And thankfully it arrived unscathed which is just is static. So let's pause this and I'll put it together and we can take a quick look at it. There she is. Super, super rad. It is so cool to actually have one of my favorite characters of all time in a physical form, finally. I'm super impressed with the detail on this too. There are just so many little things about it. Um, just a really cool statue. It was it was worth it. So I gotta go find a home for all these things. <laughs> so what did I mean by switch stuff? Well, what I mean by that is I'm going to share the 20 best switch games you can buy regardless of age. Asterisk. <laughs> not Nintendo Switch Online stuff. So you'll notice over here in my pile of props that there's some non-Switch stuff there. There's a reason. You'll you'll understand in a little bit. And I wanted to do this. Um, Arlo recently did a video kind of similar on this. He did a top 10 Switch exclusive, top 10 Switch port. Um, I don't have enough Switch exclusives <laughs> to feel like I could do a top 10 of that alone properly. And then when we get into like switch ports, it gets confusing because then you get into multi-platform stuff and all that. So I just made it easier on myself, put the list together and included compilation titles um, individually. I'll say what compilation it's on. So that way you can see what games I think are the best ones for the switch. So number 20 is Time Spinner. I think Time Spinner is a brilliant indie Metroidvania that really wowed me two years ago when I played it. It ended up being one of my favorite games of the year I played in 2020. And I think that it's great seeing a woman of color as a protagonist that is also lesbian. And there's a lot of LGBTQ plus characters in this game as well, which is just awesome. It's great to see that, because you don't see that a lot in mainstream games, and it needs to happen more often. Um, has great music, controls super well, engaging combat and exploration, and has a really nice visual style as well. So if you haven't given Time Spinner a chance, I highly recommend you check it out. It's really good. Number 19 is the Alliance Alive HD. Um, this is an enhanced port of the 3DS game, The Alliance Alive. And while I haven't played the Switch version, my understanding is outside of the graphics getting a nice shiny sheen, um, nothing else was changed in the localization. Um, NIS America basically borrowed Atlas's translation and didn't do anything to it. For the 3DS, it was wonderful. And I imagine that since the Switch port is pretty solid otherwise, that it's a great way to experience a wonderful JRPG by the minds of Soikoden and Saga um, working together on that one. It's got a wonderful soundtrack, some really, really excellent gameplay, and a really cool battle engine, a lot of flexibility with character choices. And I really just had a great time with that game. So, number 18 is Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which is indeed the best way to play the original Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, the overhauled visuals, the remastered music, um, superb. And it does so much great work ironing out a lot of the, the kinks and adding quality of life features that going back to the Wii version just seems pointless now with this Switch port available. And it is the best, best game from Monolith Soft as of right now. I'll see what I feel about 3 when it comes out in a few months. But I love this game. It's got one of the greatest soundtracks in all of games. The characters are all really solid, well-designed, have great VA work, 
was the, the first game that really decided to go with a European voiceover cast for Nintendo, and I think it paid dividends for them to do that. And the combat engine exploration are really good, and the nice thing is that with the streamlining of a lot of the side quests and stuff like that, it's, it just makes the flow much better, like, you don't feel like you're just doing side quests after side quests after side quests, and, like, having to go all the way back to drop it off and then go out for another one. It's so much better. <laughs> So, highly recommend Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition as the best way to play that game, especially if you're thinking about getting a little hyped up for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Number 17 is The Ninja Savior's Return of the Warriors, or The Ninja Warriors Once Again in Japan. This is a remastering of the Super Nintendo Natsume-developed Taito-published Ninja Warriors again, aka Ninja Warriors in America. Um, which, when they brought the latest one here, they changed it to Ninja Saviors because they were afraid that American Ninja Warrior would sue them. <laughs> so, name quibbles aside, um, Natsume Atari's Tango Project are some of the greatest developers right now doing retro content. And if you want proof of that, you can look at Ninja Saviors because it is an exquisite 2D action beat 'em up style game that has expanded the, the scope of the Super Nintendo Edition by allowing two players and two new characters and basically gives the visuals, the music, the sound effects, the gameplay a huge overhaul to make everything even better. And it is a dream to play. I love that game. It is such an excellent, excellent title. Number 15 is the Arcade Archives version of Gero Mark of the Wolves, which is SNK's finest moment as a fighting game developer in the 90s and is a gorgeous, superb, wonderful fighting game that is one of my absolute favorites of all time. It's right up there with Capcom's SNK2 Smash Ultimate. Um, just exquisite fighter with a dynamic cast that takes the, a bigger risk than Capcom was able to do with Street Fighter 3 and only kept Terry around um, and has a whole bunch of new faces that are wonderfully animated with excellent backgrounds and the game plays so good. It is one of the best feeling fighting games I've Number 14 is SteamWorld Heist by Image and Form. SteamWorld Heist is one of the most clever strategy games I've ever played. It takes the action, puts it on a 2D plane with different levels in a ship. You wander around as two or three to four bots, depending on the size of the map, and you have to use your guns ricochet to attack. And so you have to bounce it off of walls, you have to bounce it behind the bad guys to get around shields or cover. It's really clever. And it's backed with gorgeous visuals. One of the finest soundtracks um, of that era. Steam Powered Giraffe killed it on the soundtrack for that game. Great writing, kooky atmosphere, top-notch gameplay. Wonderful game. I, I love SteamWorld Heist. Um, I really would love Image Inform to return to that concept because it's so good. The nice thing about the Switch version as well is it comes with the DLC included as part of the base package. Number 13 is Untitled Goose Game. I adore UGG. Um, when I first saw the, the trailer, I knew that it was going to be a game that was hardwired for my heart, and I was not wrong. <laughs> um, it is chaos that is controlled. The thing that I love most about Untitled Goose Game is the goose. The way the goose controls feels right. It doesn't feel like a human, doesn't feel like a lot of other games that you've played. It has a different type of waddle to it, which I think is wonderful. And the, the controls are streamlined and simple. You have very limited 
influence, and yet you can do so much to annoy everyone around you. And the puzzles are so well thought out. There's a there's multiple solutions for a lot of them, and it is just an absolute joy to enter that world. Because it's not a very long game. Once you know what you're doing, you probably get through it in two hours tops. I bet. Um, just a wonderful game. Number twelve is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Unsurprising, perhaps, that it would be here. Um, I love Smash Ultimate. I think it is the purest example of the Smash Brothers concept, and partially because of quantity, because of how much is in there. But the great thing about Smash Ultimate is that the quality was not lost. The quality is there through the entire process. Tons of characters, tons of stages, tons of items, tons of modes. It's, it's a smorgasbord of the highest order with Smash Ultimate. And while there's stuff that I'm not the biggest fan of in terms of character choices or stages that came back over others, some of the music that made it in when others didn't, it's, it's a testament to Sakurai's level of detail and, and just directorial prowess. It's a wonderful fighting game, my favorite fighting game. To this day, I think it's it's just a, a, a marvelous example of the industry's impact on people because of how many <laughs> how many franchises are packed into that thing. It's wild. Um, I adore Smash. I really do. Rounding out the bottom ten is Shovel Knight, and I'm going to be specific, and I'm going to say Shovel Knight. Shovel of Hope, which is the original game. Um, I think that um, Plague of Shadows and Spectre of Torment are both solid, wonderful, standalone games on their own. I haven't gotten to King of Cards, and I didn't play much of Shovel Knight Showdown. But if you get Treasure Trove, you'll get all of that. You'll get five games, basically, for less than the price of one brand new game. I think they sell it for 40 now. Um, but it is such a top tier retro styled action platformer the original Shovel Knight is such a beautiful homage to like Mega Man and DuckTales and Castlevania and a whole bunch of other inspirations and it looks authentic yet it is running on tech far more advanced <laughs> than the NES could have ever dreamed to run Jay Kaufman's soundtrack with a few contributions from Mega Man, Capcom alum, Maname, Matsumai are exquisite as well. Um, just one of the best soundtracks with that chiptune aesthetic. Controls like a dream, lots of secrets to find. Body swap mode, which is one of the greatest introductions of a of just gender parody that I've ever seen in a game. Just a delight, absolute delight. Yacht Club, I'm very excited about Mina the Hollower because I can't wait to see what you do with a completely different modus operandi of gameplay. And Resident Evil 4 is number 10. Now, the Resident Evil 4 Switch port lacks one of the key things that I love about Resident Evil 4, and it's the Wii um, motion controls. And if you know me, and I've even said this about Resident Evil 4 specifically on this show, um, I don't like motion controls, except in like two or three games. And Resident Evil 4 is one of those games, and it is the best example of using motion controls to make a game better. Um, I love the GameCube game. Um, I bought it when it came out on my birthday back in the day, I think it was 2004, and adored it then, but the Wii version just plays the best. It doesn't look as good as the as the HD remasters that you can get on your PS4, your Xbox Ones, your Switches even at this point, but the control is there. And it's just, it still dumbfounds me that the Joy-Cons are sitting right there for gyro controls and they just didn't do it. It's very disappointing. But despite that, um, Resident Evil 4 still controls like a dream. 
It's still one of the best playing 3D action games that's ever been made. Um, the highlight of the Resident Evil franchise, um, Shinji Mikami's um, masterpiece, as well as one of Capcom's strongest overall games. And I love that developer, so me saying that means a lot. Just, just an incredible experience with very few flaws. Um, I think that game is a gameplay maestro. I really do. Number nine is Spiritfarer. This is by Thunder Lotus and is one of the best indie games you could get on the Switch. Um, I love me some feels, I've discovered, and uh, Spiritfarer delivers feels at a level that just continually floored me over and over and over again. Um, it's got a great gameplay loop that looks amazing, stunning soundtrack, some of the best character animation on the Switch. Um, I like the gameplay loop of having the ship have all these new things that you have to build and maintain. Um, the only big issue with Spiritfarer is that there's a couple of the spirits you pick up are absolute jerks. <laughs> So they're not very fun to interact with, even when you know why they're jerks. And it can get a little bit samey towards the end. But ultimately, in terms of emotional impact, artistic excellence, and just being a wonderful, wonderful game, Spiritfarer just hit so many of the right switches for me. Number eight is... Mega Man 3, classic NES game that you can get on the Mega Man Legacy Collection 1, <laughs> um, which has the six NES games. Uh, Mega Man 3 is one of my absolute favorite games of all time. Um, it is not my favorite NES game, but it is my second favorite NES game, right behind Bionic Commando. And I think that... Mega Man 3 just nails everything that I want in the, a classic 8-bit action game. It has smooth controls, interesting powers, great graphics, banging soundtrack. Sure, the frame rate's a little chuggy and it stutters a lot because the game came together really quick following the success of Mega Man 2. It was not as smooth a ride because the director was a different one than the first two games. But the testament of Mega Man 3 is that despite these issues, despite these problems, it's still the one that people put up next to Mega Man 2, which is pretty much the universal standard for Mega Man other than X. And those two argue with each other all the time for which is the best NES Mega Man. So for me, it's 3, and it's one of the greatest games of all time for me. I have so much nostalgia for it. And when I replay it, it's just like coming home in a lot of ways. So if you haven't played Mega Man 3, I highly recommend it. Number seven is Splatoon 2. I am so pumped about Splatoon 3. So I'm thinking about getting into Splatoon 2 this summer and getting my uh, my ink legs back under me, so to speak. Um, Splatoon 2 has style. It is such a stylish game. It's got a visual design for its characters and world that is very appealing. It's got one of the most dynamic creative soundtracks and the game world is so well designed. So well thought out. It's just style. It is Nintendo's closest stab at Jet Set Radio's aesthetic and it pulls it off. On top of that, it is incredibly fun. Um, it is the only multiplayer game I like to play online. That says so much, honestly. Um, I adore Splatoon 2's gameplay. I think that ranked modes is, are some of the most purest and delightful experiences I've ever had in any video game. Um, I have so many memories of playing with online friends and, and having the time of my life playing ranked. Um, the single player is also nice. It's not my favorite. I think Octo Expansion is much better um, than the original solo campaign that came with Splatoon 2. 
but I am so pumped for more Splatoon action. I just love that series so much. Number six is Metroid Dread. Such a surprise last year. Did not, A, expect a new Metroid game outside of Prime 4, and B, expect Mercury Steam to basically take what they did with Samus Returns on the 3DS and manage to get the closest anyone Nintendo has, in, in Nintendo or Mercury Steam, has gotten to Super Metroid, the pinnacle of the Metroidvania genre and my personal second favorite game of all time um dread is the closest it could do some things differently to make it better i do think that the progression is really really door focused <laughs> to the point that exploration is very much guided it's very smart about it but it is very guided um and the bosses can be a little bit hard for just like people coming into it, but it's so rewarding beating them. I was so stoked when I defeated Ravenbeak. Because <laughs> it took a lot of attempts to do it, but it felt so good. Samus has never controlled better. Um, in terms of the 3D Metroid games, they haven't looked better. I do think that the soundtrack is another little bit of a low. Um, it's fine, but it is not memorable like Super Metroid, or Metroid Prime, or even the original Metroid, which is one of the best NES soundtracks. But, Metroid Dread had so much on its shoulders, and it managed to create a very compelling, powerful, difficult joyride of an experience that made Samus relevant again, and it's the best-selling Metroid game, I think, as of right now. If it's not, it's right behind Prime, which says a lot. Number five is XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, which you can get on the XCOM 2 collection. Now, this is got going to have a heavy caveat that the Switch port of XCOM 2 is very compromised, <laughs> but... I don't care. <laughs> I love what they did with XCOM 2 so much that I can play it on the Switch with its graphical problems, its long load times, its glitchiness, all these things, and not care because I'm having the time of my life playing that game. That's how good XCOM 2 War of the Chosen is. And the gameplay, moment to moment, is so engaging. It is a delight wandering through the map, seeing what comes up at you, handling the situation as best you can. The, even when maps repeat or you're kind of getting into similar scenarios over and over again, it doesn't matter because I think that just being in the field with these soldiers and playing through the gameplay loop and trying to get through the maps and accomplish the objectives to the best of your ability with minimal casualties is such a thrill ride. Every single map is like candy, <laughs> almost. Four, it's Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, which you can get on the Castlevania Advance Collection that came out, and now you can play Aria of Sorrow on the Switch. And Aria of Sorrow is the greatest Castlevania game ever made, in my opinion. It may not look as good as Symphony of the Night, and it may not have the secrets or the graphical richness or the soundtrack, but it has the gameplay, and it has the level design, and it has the mechanics all in the right place to make that the best feeling game in the series for me, and that is why it's my favorite. I love Symphony of the Night a ton, but it has just got a little bit too much gameplay jank and too much inverted castle <laughs> for my liking to say it's the best. I just adore Aria of Sorrow. Soma Cruz is also a fantastic protagonist, one of the better ones in the series. The moving the time, even though it's really arbitrary into the future, did stuff that makes things feel fresh. And I just love the whole idea that he's Dracula. I think that's such a cool concept. 
and then you are now having to collect souls, and that's your new sub weapon. It's just a brilliant twist of the formula that I adore. It's Breath of the Wild, the greatest Zelda game of all time, pioneer for Nintendo to get out of the Zelda formula that they had built, starting with Link to the Past, solidified with Ocarina of Time, and tried to find ways to push it, but couldn't, outside of Majora's Mask, honestly. They finally got it with Breath of the Wild. They finally figured out how can we get away from the formula that we have been reliant on for 20 years and they did it with such superb execution. A huge game world to explore. Minimal hand-holding. Thank God. <laughs> lots and lots and lots to do, to find, to engage. Um, there's so little wrong with Breath of the Wild for me. I just... I got into that game after being laid off and going through my divorce it fell into my hands at the right time to basically heal so many wounds to allow me to be okay again after the worst period of my life and I will always appreciate Breath of the Wild for that um, there's some things about its execution that I hope the sequel does better um, rain makes climbing impossible. I hope they figure out a way to make that not be a thing. More enemy variety. That's a really big one for me. I felt that I was getting tired of seeing Mustalfos everywhere <laughs> where they didn't make any sense. And uh, please, let's not go into the um, make fun of trans people well again. Please, don't do that. That was a bad idea. Don't do it. If they can... Iron out those problems. Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be amazing. <laughs> Especially if they actually put Zelda in it. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid of that. So I'm not getting my hopes up too high on that. Number two. Spire Emblem Three Houses. Oh my god, I love Three Houses. This is a game that, since beating it twice, just continues to climb up my list. It's now number five. Um, arguably the best cast in any RPG. Arguably the best cast. Easily the best voice acted game that I've played. There are no faults in Three Houses VO work. It's all excellent. Character designs are incredible. Writing is incredible. Um, the gameplay is great. I love the addition of the base having this school element where you teach your students stuff. It can get a little bit sloggy if you're replaying the game, but ultimately I think it's such a great addition that really makes you bond with everybody that's in the game so much more and just makes it feel like a living, breathing space. Just adore this game. Um, it could be a little harder maybe. It could get pretty easy to breeze through. And it could have had a little bit more time in the oven to get those plot lines all actually ironed out. Because, boy, there's some stuff in there that just feels like it's unfinished. <laughs> and uh, it's because it came out kind of unfinished. But they, they just made the greatest Fire Emblem game ever with Three Houses. I saw the trailer when it was announced, and I was like, that sounds so my jam. And it is. It turned out to be. So I'm really stoked about Three Houses and seeing Three Hopes, seeing what they do with that. Um, they're taking some risks. I think that's really good that they're taking some creative risks, trying something different. We'll see if they land it. All right, number one. We're finally at the top. And you probably guess. You could probably guess. If you've even looked at my top 111 lately, you'll know it's Greece. If you listen to me talk about Greece, you'll probably know it's Greece. Greece is the greatest indie game ever made. Greece is one of the greatest artistic achievements 
in video games, both on a visual front, a musical front, and a presentation front. The gameplay is there to tell a story, and it is a story about grief, it is a story about anger, bitterness, sadness, emotional weight, heaviness, finding yourself after losing someone very important to you. Um, it is a piece of art, and I cherish Greece so much. I really do. It changed my life, and I can't say that about many games. Like, I enjoy every game that I have talked about up to this point immensely, or it wouldn't be on this list. Greece changed my life. It helped me heal from the wounds of going through some really hard stuff um, and coming to terms with myself and being able to release so much of the darkness that had taken root within me. That is what Greece has done for me. And I will always be appreciative and thankful for it. And I cannot wait to see what Nomada Studio does next. And I keep hoping that I see it. <laughs> Alright, friends. Thank you for joining me on this chat about the top 20 Switch games and my latest pickups. Thank you for your patience while I've worked through some difficulties in moving forward. I hope we'll be back to the weekly norm. Until next time, my friends, thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.